Sooner or later, you are probably going to need to retire a self-hosted runner. When that day comes, you'll need to know how to uninstall the runner. Let's dive into that, and also do a little more deep diving into some more files on the self-hosted runner. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and today we are looking at how to uninstall a self-hosted runner. In addition, we are going to dive into a couple of dot files I saw in the runner folder that looked interesting. Now, let's dive in and see what we can learn. Let's look at how we uninstall a self-hosted runner. I installed my runner at the org level, if you'll remember. So we'll go to the organization settings, and we'll go to actions, and we'll go to runners, and we'll select the runner that I want to uninstall. And you'll see that the runner has a big remove button. Now if I click the remove button, it's going to, you know, give me a little bit of a warning, you know, removing this runner permanently removes it from your organization. And I can do it in one of two ways. There's the recommended way, which is if you have access to the runner, you just go to the config.sh and you remove it. And it gives you a token to be able to remove it. Or if you don't have access to the runner, then I can force remove the runner, which basically takes it out of, in this case, the organization. But it doesn't change anything on the, the runner itself. But it does remove it from the organization. So we're going to go to the runner and run this command. All right, so you can see we have all these files in there. That's fine. So we're going to run the config.sh remove and pat give it a token. And it says runner remove successfully, remove the dot credentials, or remove the dot runner. And if I refresh my runners page, the runner is no longer there. And I can see that, you know, obviously the folder is still there, all the files are still there. Um, those the dot credentials folder is no or file is no longer there, and that dot runner file is no longer there. But I and then now I could just delete this folder and we've now uninstalled the runner. But you know what? Let's go see what's in those dot credentials in that dot runner. So let's go install a new runner. I've already downloaded everything. So now I can just say, let's install. Well, yeah, there's a bunch of crap in here. So let's just do it, delete everything. And let's start over. So let's go download the file. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Go to Linux and download the file. And then we will untar it and we will reinstall it. And let's go see what's in those two dot files that we didn't look at previously. All right, so let's extract it. And then let's install it. We'll take the default group. We'll call this GH runner two, just to give it a different name. We will not add any more labels for now. Take the default work folder. All right, and you can see we've got a dot credentials and a dot runner folder or dot runner files. So if we do a cat dot runner, and 
agent ID. That's where we specify the name, the pool that it's in, the server URL, and the, the GitHub URL, which is where we did the initial install and the work folder. So that contains you know, some basic config information about the runner. That's interesting. All right, I'm kind of scared to do this one, but let's see what happens if I say dot credentials. So this is obviously whatever it's using. It looks like, ah, tokens. Must be tokens, the tokens that it's using to actually be able, for the runner to be able to connect back would potentially be my guess. So probably don't need y'all to have those. So at this point, I've either blurred them out or if I haven't, then I'm going to uh, uninstall this runner. <laughs> Why don't we just go uninstall this runner to be safe? And they're gone. And then I can just do rm-rf actions runner, and I've cleaned everything up. So there you go. That's how you can install uninstall a self-hosted runner. And we did a little bit more of diving into um, some of the information that you know it's in some of these dot files. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to uninstall a self-hosted runner. If so, please comment and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and smash that bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching.